So thank you everybody for sticking it out today. I know it's a long week and we aren't even halfway through the week yet. Uh, so please, uh, please do answer our questionnaire. Um, tomorrow we have uh, scheduled, um, sorry, this is actually, I think I opened the wrong, uh, the wrong, uh, no, this is, this is correct, but it's highlighted wrong. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about cell properties and behaviors, and in particular, cell division. Uh, we're going to have uh, an avascular tumor simulation where the cells absorb a nutrient or oxygen that is produced by the stromal tissue uh, and grow in response to that, uh, become quiescent and necrotic in response to that. Uh, and then we're going to have a simulation uh, which Roberto Tomas will show us, uh, which uses uh, chemotaxis effectively uh, to generate uh, 2D and 3D simulations of cell migration. And that'll introduce the idea of compartmental cells. And then in the afternoon, I'll start uh, with a gentle introduction to using tellurium and antimony inside of CompuCell uh, to build uh, network models so that you can control the cells with signaling and regulatory networks. So those were really the things that uh, we had on the agenda. Uh, tomorrow, the uh, schedule will be the same. I'm sorry, I'm not sure why uh, this uh, is showing today's schedule rather than tomorrow's schedule, uh, but it looks the same except the two should be replaced with three. Uh, we'll start uh, about 10 a.m. as usual with questions and comments, uh, an outline of what we're going to do. Uh, then we're going to do the, when we come back to the previous one, which will show that correctly, uh, we'll come back to the cell properties and behaviors, which Josh will do, uh, the avascular tumor simulation, uh, the 3D cell, two and 3D cell migration, and then the introduction to subcellular modeling. And so that's the schedule for tomorrow. Uh, if anybody has any specific questions, wants to talk about uh, the hackathon projects, appreciated all the neat uh, suggestions for hackathon, uh, that will be great. Uh, there's a question, will Josh please upload the demo files for tomorrow? Uh, it would be up ideal to be able to upload the CC3D files to NanoHub before the session. That's a good suggestion. Yes, yes. I've already put uh, the uh, demo file for 3.4 up. So that is loadable from the student materials folder. Um, there's a question, is it possible to preferentially localize chemicals to different parts of a cell? Uh, that's a complicated question because the, if the chemicals are represented as fields, then you would have to have secretion and absorption in order for that to happen. Uh, uh, Julio has developed a method where you create what are called subcells, which represent chemical species and that move within cells. Uh, and that that allows you then to implement actually the movement of chemicals within cells. Uh, but uh, that's a relatively complicated thing to do. I actually showed those simulations yesterday, some of those simulations yesterday. I don't know if Julio is going to be able to get to that uh, within the limits of the course, uh, but if somebody wanted to learn about how to do that, uh, you should ask Julio uh, and he could perhaps show you how to do it. Um, yes, there's a comment about using modeling phase separation of chemicals within the cell. That's exactly right. Uh, Julia wrote simulations, for example, of uh, PIP2, PIP3 segregation on the cell membrane, of uh, the localization of uh, Flamingo and Van Gogh in uh, planar polarity uh, development in Drosophila uh, using this methodology. And it, it's fairly straightforward to do it, uh, but it's probably a little bit beyond what we're going to get to in the classes that we have here. Um, 
if you would like to see that, we can ask Julio and see if he can prepare a module on it. But uh, uh, that's uh, probably a little bit beyond what we can do in this in this set of classes. Uh, but we definitely can uh, do that. Uh, there's a question: Can CD, C, 3D solve the direction diffusion problems? Uh, the fundamental answer to that is no. Uh, solving advection diffusion equation is an industry. Uh, typically, a good advection diffusion solver is 150 to 200,000 lines of C++. Uh, and there are specialized packages like Phoenix uh, that do that. Uh, there also are some uh, finite element packages or finite volume packages uh, that work in Python that you can use. And so if you really want to do uh, advection diffusion in the classical form, which would be solving, for example, full neighbor Stokes equation, uh, then you're better off using one of the pre-existing packages that are highly optimized. TJ can weigh in on that. Uh, if you want to solve reaction, advection diffusion using cells, uh, you can do that. You can define a scalar uh, concentration inside of each cell. Uh, you can define uh, a uh, chemical exchange between cells, um, and you can do diffusion that way. Uh, there used to be some uh, relatively sophisticated uh, advection diffusion solvers of that kind in CompuCell. I actually don't know, TJ, if these are still implemented or not. Um, they weren't used very much. Which uh, one, sorry? Uh, the advection diffusion solver where you actually have diffusion happen between cells automatically. Yeah, they're still in the code base, but um, I don't think we even document them anymore. Certainly, we don't uh, we don't work on them. So you could try them, but uh, that would be at your own risk. Uh, the reason the reason for that again is not that, that that's not an interesting problem, uh, but that actually numerically to solve it efficiently is extremely difficult, uh, and uh, it's better to outsource that to packages that are specialized. Uh, but. It is possible to do it if, if it's something that you need to do. Any other questions uh, about that? Uh, we've done, we've done, we've certainly done advection diffusion. Actually, I showed you an advection diffusion simulation. Uh, the simulation I showed of liver toxicity uh, used an advection diffusion solver. Uh, so it's not not uh, that it does it's not possible, uh, but it's numerically not a very efficient way of doing it. Yeah, TJ's comment is a good one. It, it's really hard to, to do it. To develop a general purpose advection diffusion solver is very hard. Uh, doing it for a specific application is not so hard. But to write a general purpose advection diffusion solver that works well under all conditions is quite difficult. Anything else we can talk about? I know it's been a long day for people. I hope that the discussion of the uh, hackathon projects was, was useful. And I hope that we're able to get some good hackathon uh, teams together. Okay. Well, thank you, everybody. Maybe our instructors could stay on for a second and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Thanks, everyone. Have a nice evening.